Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we are looking at word problems. That's right, we're making it real, doing some word problems. Let's see what happens. We're going to talk about some word problems, and then after that, to change things up, we're going to talk about some more word problems. That's right, we're talking about word problems today. So our first word problem has to do with video games. Um, on a video game, I gain 200 points each time I catch a gem. But each time I hit a wall, I lose 50 points. If I start the round at negative 200, I hit the wall three times, but I caught four gems, what's the new score at the end of the round? This is a typical type of question, and there's several different ways you could solve it. I'd like you to do some mental math and try and figure it out. Go ahead and pause and practice. Try and figure that out and see if you could solve this problem and figure out how many gem you would have at the end of the round or points I guess at the end of the round all right we're back I wonder which method you use and if I was in a classroom I'd ask you but um, there's several different methods you could use repeat addition right where you would add plus 200 plus 200 plus 200 um, every time you caught a gem and then you subtract um, 50 every time you hit a wall or we could do what I'm going to show you here. So the first step that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I solve word problems. I will circle some important pieces of information. Where are we starting? That's 200 or negative 200. That's where I start at the very beginning. What's next? Well, I hit the wall three times. And then what's next? I caught four gems. So those are the basic pieces of information that are super important for having me solve this problem. And the way I would write it out might look a little bit complicated, so I tried to color code it. So instead of subtracting 50 and going minus 50, minus 50, minus 50, I just take that minus 50 from hitting the wall and I multiply it times 3 because it's happening 3 times. Same with collecting gems. I could add 200 plus 200 plus 200 plus 200 like 4 times or I can multiply 200 times 4 because that's how many times I'm collecting a gem. Now I do have to consider that I'm starting at negative 200 so I have to keep that in mind and then add on the additional things. All right, let's go ahead and figure out what my score would be. I start with negative 200. I'm going to add on that negative 150 for how many times I hit the wall. Not a great driver. And then I'm also going to add on 800 points for how many times I catch those gems. And when you add those together, we start from the left to the right. 200 plus or negative 200 plus negative 150 will give us negative 350. We add 800 to that for our final point value of 450. We have 450 points at the end of this round. And that's the way that I would solve it. Again, you could solve this by just adding those numbers. Negative 200 minus 50 minus 50 minus 50 plus 200 plus 200 plus 200 plus 200. And you would end up with the same answer. However, doing it this way makes it a little bit more simple and you could easily scale it up. For example, if I hit the wall 500 times and I caught 300 gems, I'd be able to do this question in just as many steps. If you were adding over and over, it would take a lot more time. All right, so this is a method that might look more complicated now, but it could easily scale up. So that's why I like using this method. All right, let's go on to our next question. It has to do with money. I run a business and we need to know how much money, um, how much to pay my employees. I have three employees who work for $12.50 per hour. If they work for eight hours at regular pay, then they work two hours at overtime, where they're making $6.25 more, what is my total employee expense? This is a complicated question. It's got a lot of things going on. So I recommend that you get out your highlighter or your circling tool, kind of identify the important pieces of information, find some kind of organized way of setting it up and try and solve it. And then I'll go through how I solved it. So practice on your own, try it out, see what happens. Go, go, go. All right, we are back. I'm going to show you what I do to solve this problem. First off, I'm saying, where am I starting? In this case, I'm going to start with three employees. I know I've got three different people who are working. What's my next piece of information? Well, I know that they work for $12.50 per hour for eight hours. That's good to know. 
The next piece of information that I think is really important is all of that last two lines, right? They're working for two hours at overtime where they make 625 more. All right, so that's an important piece that I'm going to have to put together, and this is how I would put that together. So again, it's color coded here, where I have three. That's how many employees, and all of them are working the same amount. So I'm just going to find out how much they make, and then multiply that whole thing times three at the end. So let's go in and see what's my eight hours of work. That's eight hours times 1250. That's what you see in blue. That's the easy part. Right, 1250 times eight hours, no problem. The red part is a little bit more complicated. And I'll explain all the pieces there. I know that they're making $6.25 more than their regular salary. So that's what that 1250 plus 625, that's how much they're making per hour that they're working overtime. Then I'm multiplying that two times two because they're working two additional hours. And again, this equation might look pretty complicated, but it's very scalable. If they work 10 hours, I could just put 10 in there instead of eight. Um, if they work four hours of overtime, I just put a four in there instead of two. And I could really scale this up and not have to do a bunch of extra steps. All right, let's go ahead and simplify this expression. I start inside the parentheses. I'm going to multiply 12.5 times 8. I'm also going to add that number 12, 1250 plus 625 and get their hourly pay at overtime, which is $18.75. Not bad. We're going to multiply that times 2. $18.75 times 2. And then I add together the amounts inside the parentheses multiply it times three for my total amount that I am paying as an employer of $412.50. There we go. So that's the solution for question number two. I'm going to, my employee expense is $412.50. All right. So each of those three employees, if you're interested, is making $137.50 for one week of work. Actually, one day of work. I'm sorry. Right. Yeah, because they were working 12 per hour. They're working for eight hours. Yeah, so there we go. All right, now we're going to move on to question number three. On January 1st, I had $1,023 in my bank account. Each month, I pay an electric bill of $241, a phone bill of $152, and, it, and insurance, which is $77. In January... I got a job that pays $300 paid four times per month. All right, so it's like $300 a week. But it's paid four times per month, so it's nice and consistent. That job continued through the end of April. In April, I have to pay college tuition for the next semester, and my tuition is $3,700. What is my new bank account balance at that point? So this is a lot of information. There's going to be several steps involved here. I want you to write it out and try and figure out an organized way, and then we'll come back and I will look at it. Three, two, one, do it on your own. That's a great thing. If I can make my students do all the work on their own, then that means I'm getting paid to do nothing, which is fantastic for me. All right, I'm back again. So let's take a look at, again, the pieces of information I'm going to circle here. And I've circled them in all of the different questions that we've done so far. The first piece of information is where are we starting? I'm starting at $1,023. Great. Um, I have my expenses circled in blue and my, the increase that I have circled in red. Now these expenses are monthly. The circled in red part is weekly, so or four times per month. So let's go ahead and add all of that together with the additional piece of information that I circled down here, and that is that there's this big bill of $3,700 that's due at the end of all of that. That's my tuition for college, so I'm, getting, I'm paying that extra money to go to college. All right, so here's my full equation. I start with the $1,223. I'm going to subtract out my bills, and notice here I'm multiplying times four. 
in the equation or in the expression here. I have minus four times that full amount. That's because it's the months of January, February, March, and April, four months. Now I have those expenses every single month. And so I'm just making it easier instead of saying minus 241, minus 152, minus 77, and then doing that again for February and again for March and again for April, I'm just going to multiply it times four. I'm trying to make it a little bit more simple. I go on to my red, um, the section I have in red there, I get paid $300 times four. That tells me how much I'm getting paid each month. And I, I'm again multiplying that times four because I have four months. Then at the very end, I'm subtracting that $3,700 for that college tuition. So this is the way I would write out this entire expression and then simplify. I add the numbers together or multiply the numbers together inside of the parentheses first. I do that four times as a multiplication. Now I'm going to do all of the subtraction that's left. 1,023 minus 1,880 gives me negative 857. All the other numbers stayed the same. Now I'm going to start joining together. Negative 857 plus 4,800 gives me 3,943. And then I subtract my college tuition to leave me with $243. That's how much I have in my bank at the end of four months. But I've paid for my college tuition, so that's pretty good. And I've made sure I've been keeping up on all my bills. All right, so that's our third question there. Question number four. This one here is really complicated. Most of them have had multiple steps. This one here has, again, some multiple steps. Let's look through. A potter buys some clay for 75 cents a pound and some glaze for $6.25 per pound. She's making five large platters that will take five pounds of clay and one pound of glaze each. When she's finished, she can sell them for $35 each. What is her profit? And if she works on pottery for four hours, how much does she make per hour? Okay, it takes her four hours to make those five platters. How much is she making per hour? All right, let's take a look. What's our starting point? Let's look at the expenses. We've got 75 cents per pound for clay, and she's using making five large platters that are five pounds each. That'll tell us how much she's spending on clay. Next, um, we've got $6.25 per pound of glaze, right? She's using one pound of glaze for each one. So that's gonna tell us the amount that she's spending on glaze. So we'll capture how much is she spending on clay, how much is she spending on glaze, and then we'll start looking at the profit, which is selling each of them for $35, and you get this equation. It seems pretty complicated, let me break it down. So at the beginning, I have how much she's making. $35 times five. That's the amount she's making. She's making $35 for each um, piece of pottery she's making. So that, I'm gonna take how much she makes, and then I'm gonna subtract out the expenses. All right, that's 75 cents per pound for clay, and there's five pounds for five platters, and then the 625 per pound for glaze, and it's times one because you're using one pound of glaze, and it's times five because there's five platters being made. We're gonna simplify starting inside of our parentheses, and it'll start looking like this when we simplify all the parentheses down, and then we'll join together our eight $18.75, that's the cost of the clay, and our $31.25, the cost of the glaze. We add those together to get $50, and when we subtract, we'll end up with $125, which means she has earned $125. Now we have to go to the second part. How much is she making per hour if it took her four hours? So she made $125, we would divide that by four for our final answer that she's actually earning $31.25 per hour. All right, and that's how we would solve question number four. This one was really complicated and had two parts. We had to make sure that we answered all the parts of this. It's super complicated. If you got to that answer without needing my help, that's fantastic. All right, question number five. 
I make a quick run to the store with three friends. We each buy one movie for $4.99 and a snack for $1.99 and a drink for $0.99. Cents. In the end, how much did we spend all together for our movie party? There's a couple of things here. I make a run to the store with three friends. This is an important place where a lot of mistakes are made. How many people are there? If it's me and three friends, that's going to be four people, right? So just think about that for a second. Okay, we're and then what are we buying? We're buying four ninety nine, one ninety nine, and ninety nine. All right, that's how much money we're spending, and we're multiplying it again times four. It's important that we recognize that all of those amounts we're spending are being added together, and we're multiplying times four because there's four people: me and my three friends. And you might say, Mr. Buffington, you're a math teacher. I'm sure you don't have three friends, and you might be <laughs> right. You might be right, but it hurts when you say it. I'm just messing with you. Let's go ahead and move along. We're going to add together all those things inside the parentheses. We're going to multiply times four and get our total cost of our movie party, $31.88. Good thing for that $5 bin. All right. Couple things to remember. When I'm doing word problems, I read the question to find out what it's asking, and then I read it a second time. I highlight all the important pieces of information. Then I remember all of those math rules that we've talked about, all the rules that you've learned, all of the order of operations. We use the correct parentheses to kind of organize it. And we go through and we solve. I hope that that video has been helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.